systems, best unit, easy peasy. I love systems. And they used to have solving three variables, but we only solved two variables, which is sad, but it's okay. I just really enjoyed doing three. Okay, so when we're solving graphically, when we're solving graphically, your solution is a coordinate pair. So super important, the solution you're looking for is stated as a coordinate pair. So you need to know that. And it has to satisfy both equations. So it's true in both places. And you guys have already done this. You've done it for invariant points, ladies. You've done it already. This isn't any different than invariant points when we were doing reciprocal graphs in 7.4. So you've done this already. You just maybe didn't put a name to it. Um, so to solve a system graphically, which is a pain in the butt, uh, you must graph both equations on the same coordinate plane and identify the point of intersection. What does intersection mean? Uh, where they cross. So an intercept is where it crosses an axis, axes, like an X or a Y. Intersect means where they cross each other. Okay? Uh, the good news is, is that when graphing, the ones I'm going to give you are going to be really nice points. They're going to be whole numbers. Okay? They're not going to be 3.14 or anything like that. They're going to be nice whole numbers. We're going to get into the decimals tomorrow when we're solving it algebraically. So the numbers get not so nice there. So that's kind of the benefit of this. Okay, linear quadratic. So that's when you're graphing a linear function, which is going to result in what? Straight line. And a quadratic is going to give me a parabola. And in my head, I say parabola so I can spell it correctly. So, and then the other type of system is a quadratic quadratic where you're going to have two parabolas. Okay? What do you think is going to be on your test? A quadratic quadratic probably, right? No. No. That would be crazy. I've never done that. There could be. Horizontal parabolas are called hyperbolas. And we used to graph them in the old curriculum, and I really miss them. They're sideways parabolas. Like a C. Or an, an opposite to a C. Just one or the other. Okay. All right. Let's go back to x-intercepts when you guys were learning how to graph parabolas. Um, how many x-intercepts options could you have? You could have three. What were they? Two. No. We have, we're just looking for x-intercepts. How many can a graph have? We had three possible options. Zero, one, and two. Zero, it doesn't touch the x-axis. One, the vertex sat on the x-axis. And two, the parabola's arms cross the x-axis, right? So the same sort of thing here. I can have a linear and a parabola. How many solutions would I have here? I'd have zero, right? They're not going to meet. So there's the potential that you're going to have a no solution. Hopefully we're feeling a little bit comfortable with more no solution stuff. Um, a linear quadratic system. Uh, another one might be one solution. What would that look like? Crosses one. Anybody feel like drawing a picture? Yeah? You want to come up and draw a picture? Oh. Tried to get out of it. Right? So my solution would be right there, where they intersect. Yeah. 
And what's the last possibility? Two. I know. Can you guys do one that's different than the one I did? Did you? Nice. <laughs> so remember that the solution has to be stated as a coordinate pair when you're graphing. Okay, pretty straightforward. These are just some examples of one. You're going to see many other ones as you graph. Okay, quadratic, quadratic, two parabolas. Same situation here. Uh, this, and I have that. Will those ever cross? No. So I would have zero solutions here. Now, the next point is going to be where they share a vertex. Oh, I guess there's one more. There's, one, there's four options. I'll show you the fourth option in a second. Um, Ouch, Stephen. Oh, Stephen. <laughs> not kind, not yeah, kind. Okay. <laughs> You got me all rattled. I can't even spell solutions anymore. So oftentimes you're going to see that the parabolas are opening in different directions and that's going to give you different results. Um, there's one other situation that would only happen in the quadratic quadratic. And it's a place where there's infinite solutions. And that's where they are the exact same graph. So if my first parabola was right here, and then my second parabola was the exact same place, we would say that those are infinite solutions. If the two graphs are exactly the same. So the two graphs lay directly on top of each other, so every point is shared. So that's an infinite solution. So that does show up every once in a while, but the three that we're mostly concerned about is here, but you might see something where an infinite solution. This would never have an infinite solution because they're two different shapes. They're a quadratic and a linear. They're never going to have infinite. It's only when they're both parabolas. Okay. Did you really just say that, Logan? Yeah, Logan, why did you say that? Logan. Logan. She's lying here. Okay. Uh, I'm not even going to go there. Two divers <laughs> start their dives at the same time. So if this is time. Okay, and that's height, height above the water. One diver jumps from a one meter springboard and the other one jumps from a three meter springboard. So what we know is that we have two different graphs. Okay, that's gross. Could you create a situation um, can you create a graph on yours where there is no solution? Go ahead, do it. They are jumping off the springboard. Okay. Could you create a solution where there's, or sorry, a situation where there's one solution? Yes. Yes. 
So if I give you this question on a test, your answers could be completely different than each other. So if I were to do one that has no solutions, maybe this person goes up really high and comes down. And this person So that would have no solution. They are springboards, right? Crazy, crazy times. Um, we could do it where maybe the, the pink graph doesn't go as high and maybe this one goes out further and then they might cross at that point. So you just have to understand that if I'm asking you to create a situation, which I have done on different tests and stuff like that, Answers will be varied. It doesn't mean that they're wrong. It just means your interpretation of the situation. Okay, nothing hard here. Now we're actually going to do it. Okay, so I hope everybody's able to identify which one's the linear and which one's the quadratic. Yeah, no. I hope so. If we haven't quite figured that out yet, you're looking for the x squared versus the x. Um, I would suggest that when you're doing graphing, I would probably either use a table of values or slope point form. <laughs> Or something that's going to give me some coordinate pairs, I wouldn't use intercepts to graph. I wouldn't use the x and the y intercept. Gentlemen, if he's not here, I don't need to hear his voice. Okay. All right. So I'm going to rearrange this equation into y intercept form. And then I'm going to change this one into, into y equals form, so I'm going to put it into standard form. No, oh, minus three. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm going to have to leave soon. Okay. So I think I'm going to graph my linear because it makes it's the easiest to do. Ooh, you know what I should do? Before I do anything, I probably want to make sure my increments are reasonable for both graphs. And like for this one, I'm going to go up by ones. Like that makes the most sense. But I really should check this one. I know it has a y-intercept of negative 3, but what are important points for parabolas? Definitely the vertex x-intercepts could be helpful, but this one's not going to factor, and I have no desire to do my quadratic formula. So I'm going to grab my vertex first from here. Negative b divided by 2a. So negative 6 divided by negative 1, negative 2 is... Positive 3. Okay, we know that's at 3. And then we're going to have negative 9 plus 18. Is it positive 9? Positive 9 minus 3. Okay, yeah, because it's going to be negative 3 squared. I did secret formula for that. Oh. Okay. So we know our vertex, and we're opening down. So I think I'm okay to go up by ones. Are you guys going to be okay? I don't doubt that you do.
How about you guys put some increments on your graph? So I think that for this one, I think I'm going to do a table of values for my quadratic um, because I think that's going to be helpful. X-intercepts won't be helpful here because they won't be nice values. So when I set up my table of values again for your quadratic, you want to put that vertex right in the middle of your table because you want to pick points on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of it. Okay, let's do some math. If we substitute one in there, if we substitute one into the equation for the parabola, what do we get? And if I substitute two in there, Five. And we should anticipate the numbers getting smaller the further we move away from the quadratic or from the vertex, sorry, because we're opening down. And so what do we know about parabolas? What makes them beautiful? They're symmetrical. So if you've successfully, if you trust your math on this side, you should be able to trust your mouth on this side. <laughs> and some of you are comfortable with the pattern which is great. If you are, please feel free to use it, but you do need the coordinate pairs just because you're looking for the place that these two things cross. Do they not know we're doing math? Okay, so I'm going to give you some words of wisdom. We always have to label two points on a graph. I would wait until we have both of them labeled, and then I'm going to label the solution on the graph because those points apply to both graphs. No? Okay, don't label points until you're done. Okay. Okay, good job, everybody. Um, this one crosses at positive one. And what's the slope? Up one, over one, up one, over one. So I have two graphs on one coordinate plane, so they need to be labeled with their equations. 
And this time it has to be with equations because one's not an absolute or a reciprocal function of each other. So they have to be labeled with their equations. How many solutions do I have here? Two. Everybody would agree there's two? Yeah. There's one here. And there's one there. And those points are shared by both the graphs. So if you label the solutions on the graph, two points is good for both graphs. If you don't like this, you're more than welcome to label multiple. So where's my first solution at? One, two. Second solution? Four, five. You need to make sure that I understand, that you understand, the solutions are the points of intersection. So I need to see this. Uh, that would make it super helpful, but you don't have to. But you need to state that those are the solutions of the graph. Okay, pretty straightforward. If you can graph, this unit, there, this lesson isn't going to be hard. Chances are, though, this is what's going to be on your test. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Monday. If you showed up on time, we already went through this. All right. So again, with these, I'm going to put them into standard form where it's y equals just because I like that better. What do I know about those y-intercepts? They're big. They're big. I'm probably not going to plot the y-intercept on the graph. But here's my word of warning. If you're not plotting the y-intercept, your parabola should not cross the y-axis. Because if you have it cross at 2, that would be an incorrect graph. Okay, what's the strategy we're going to use here first? Uh, Find the vertex of both of them. I'm going to use the secret formula. You could complete the square. Um, I subscripted these just so when I'm referring to y1, you guys know what I'm talking about. Negative B divided by 2A. What do you mean we're not graphing this? Never mind, it's in mine. I think I did my math right on both of those. I think you did. Whoa, Steve. He is, yeah. Steven, Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, gentlemen, I don't want to have to ask anyone to leave, but we're getting to that point. I nominate a couple of you. Yeah, is that what you think, Jonah? I didn't say that. That was me. That was him. That was him. That was Rahat. You're all going. Um, so again, I'm going to default to a table of values here because we need to find the coordinates that they share. So doing x-intercepts, even if they are perfect, might not be our best solution. All right. Uh, 2 minus 8. What? Oh, goodness gracious. So what are the chances I'm going to graph uh, when x is equal to 1? Probably not very good. So we don't have to graph that one? Oh, my bad. Okay. And before I graph anything, I really do want to see the table of values for both of them before I commit to my increments. Did anybody check my math on that? No? You're all just pop. Well, that's thanks for having faith in me. Um, so again, I think I'm going to go up by ones just so I can see the spaces on the graph. I think that will make the most sense. You could pick a different increment. Wait, so then how are we going to go to 21? We don't. Okay. Come Sorry, you can't see the top of my graph. It's all right.
Um, so this one, how many solutions? One. Just the one. So what we need here is we need two points labeled on every graph. So in this case, only one point shared. So you'll need an additional one point on either graph. And that point occurs at 3, 5? And then we need to make a statement about the solution. So not really hard. You're just graphing two parabolas on a coordinate plane and you're seeing where they cross. And for this lesson these, and for this situation, these will be really nice. Um, these will be really nice points, like you won't get 1.5 or 3.25 or whatever. If you're getting those points, then we have a problem. The only time I might do that is if I give you the graph and say, circle where the solutions are. They might not be perfect because you're just circling. Even on the test, they'll be nice. They will. I promise. Okay, that's it. That's all.